You're listening to the number one podcast for nonprofit leaders, getting your nonprofit fully funded. This is the Fundraising Masterminds Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Galasinski, and my co-host, Jim Dempsey. We welcome you to another great episode that we have for you today. Yep, We're going to be talking about life principles. Um, We call that the labor, influence, finance, and expertise. Right, right. So how does that apply to the area of development in the area of nonprofit organizations? Well, what it does is, you know, so many nonprofit leaders really are just focused in in one area. They're focused in on finances. How can I get someone involved financially? And even if you're you're interested in friend raising over fundraising, you still are focusing in on one aspect of someone's life. Mm-hmm. When you are missing three very important factors, you're forgetting the labor, their influence, and their expertise. Hmm. So they bring, most partners bring more than just finances to the table. They're bringing their time their relationships with other people and they're influencing other relationships and they've got gifts and talents and skills and that's their expertise right. that they're bringing to the table. Right. So. Last time we talked about win, keep, and lift. Right. right? We want to win partners to yeah. our organization. We want to keep them and yeah. we want to lift them to new heights. But how we lift them right. Right, is directly related to labor, influence, finances, and expertise. expertise. Yeah. So... Um, we're going to dig into this topic uh, today on how you can apply this acrostic to your organization. So if this is a topic that you guys are interested in, I would encourage you to smash that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, we have this available on podcasts, wherever podcasts are broadcast. Yeah, are available. Uh, so you can watch us on YouTube or you can listen to us in the car. Either way, we have great episodes ready for you guys in the area of fundraising, management, fundraising tips, and marketing, uh, marketing, all kinds of great stuff related to nonprofits. Right. So Jim, let's get into the meat and potatoes of life. Yes, yes. Well, I'll tell you, it is just so important to find life partners, individuals that are going to come alongside and invest in those four areas. The problem that happens too often is that people make the mistake of looking at everyone equally and getting overwhelmed by trying to make 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 of their partners who give financially life partners. And that just is Mm. going to be a recipe for failure for you because you can't develop that many close relationships with people. So typically what I'll do is I'll start out with what I refer to as the critical few. The 20% of your partners that make up 80% of your giving Mm. for your organization. And I take that 20% and I look at individually at each one at how we can make them life partners. So who have got certain skills, talents, and their time that they're going to invest in, and who's a great networker? That's Mm -hmm. part of the I, the influencing, networking and finding other friends. Now, one of the first things that I get pushback on and can be, again, somewhat controversial is the fact that we are treating people differently. Now, people say, well, Jim, doesn't scripture say we ought to treat every Everyone alike. Well, mm-hmm. I believe Scripture says that everyone is of equal value; that God can use any one of those. But if I look at Jesus's life as a model, hmm. I don't believe that Jesus treated everyone equally. There were twelve individuals that he poured his life into, mm-hmm. and even more closely, Peter, James, and John were even closer from that standpoint. Now, he loved the masses. Mm -hmm. And he spent time with the masses, but the masses overwhelmed him oftentimes, Mm -hmm. and he had to go and have time with the Lord individually, and I equate that to our total mailing list. I believe that the masses, if you take the entire partner base of yours, your donor base, they would overwhelm you. So focus in on those individuals, just as Jesus focused in on the 12. Now... You mentioned the importance of selecting 20%. Yes. How do you find that 20%? Well, you have to you have to know your your list. You really do. And you need to either Well, let me rephrase that. Mm-hmm. What are you looking for in yeah. the 20%? 
Yeah, it's it's important that you go to a largest single gift. I believe the largest single gift is your best way to find the right partner. Hmm. The a lot of times individuals will go and use cumulative giving, but I I believe the largest single gift actually gives you the most accurate list of individuals that targets those people. Okay. Giving you an example, in cumulative, that an individual may give $100 a month for $1,200, but I would rather take someone who has capability of giving $1,000. You right. and I, we could write $100 a month checks, right. but we couldn't, in most cases, sit down and write a check for $1,000. Right. I want to find someone who I can invest and, and have their life invested in our ministry and have the capability of writing a check for a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars or more. But you said the uh, life acrostic is labor, influence, finances, and expertise. So why do we need to go to the top givers to find those 20%? Well, you need to start somewhere, Jason. And and it really is the best way to go. I, I can't evaluate someone's heart. If I could evaluate where someone's heart is, whether they loved us, and or if this was the widow's might, I just, I can't evaluate motives, interests, and desires. Mm-hmm. But I can evaluate their giving. Now, once again, their gift to us may not give a complete picture of what their net worth is. And it could also be that someone has a high net worth but gives $20 to our organization a year. But knowing what I have and knowing what's in front of me, that's the best use of the information that I have. There's a scripture in Matthew where Jesus was talking about our heart. Mm -hmm. And you actually mentioned this in our course. Um, You said that where where your treasure is that's where your heart will be also and right. people make a mistake often of confusing that with right. where your heart is that's where your treasure will be and that sounds so right. right. In fact, I had a ministry that I knew of that printed 100,000 receipts that said, where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be also. It sounds so right. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not biblical. Right. Jesus got it right. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. I was not interested in the stocks of Apple or of Dell Computers or right. IBM, other companies, until I invested in those. Yeah. Once I was there, I was interested interested in the leadership and the decisions right. they make. So basically what you're saying is the people who are already giving large amounts right. are going to have a heart yes. for the ministry. Well, so based we on their start, giving. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. So we start with those people. It doesn't right. necessarily mean that a $25 a month person doesn't have a heart for right. the ministry. But That's we're right. saying that we want to start right. with the larger donors. That's right. Because of what Jesus said in that verse. Yes. Um, because that is an indicator, it's not the full picture, but right. an indicator of where their heart could be. Right. Uh, and so that's a good place to start. Yes. And then once we've identified that 20%, then we're really going to them with the labor, influence, finances, and expertise. What's the first thing that you wanna do when you've yeah. identified the the group of people? Yeah. Do you have a process? Well, of- once again, I always start, Jason, I start with the finances area because once again, where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. So I start there. Mm-hmm. In fact, if I'm talking about an individual point with people, one of the things, and you know, I know at some point you'll share this, but we do a course that we offer to the public, which is the perfect vision dinner strategy. And mm-hmm. I believe that the vision dinner strategy is that crack in the door to get into people's hearts. Hmm. You start with the gift. I don't offer in this model a whole myriad of opportunities because I believe people will get confused with too many opportunities. I lead with give a financial gift tonight and then follow up with opportunities to get involved with their labor, their influence, and their expertise. And so I lead with the finances and then follow up with opportunities for them to be involved with their time and connecting with other individuals through their influence. And then what's your gifts? What's your talents? What's your skills? What are you employed in doing? What do you like to do? And can you come along and help us in those areas? So how does that look practically? Like yeah. I understand the financial part because right, right. they can just write a check, but yeah. what, what, how do you 
get someone involved in labor influence and expertise? Well, it really starts with the opportunities, I believe. You, you've got to find opportunities for people to be involved in those areas. You can't just find out that someone's got a, an interest in volunteering and then go out and try and find volunteer opportunities to fit in the box. You need to survey your staff, find out what kind of volunteer opportunities are out there. What kind of opportunities exist for engagement? In a prior video that we did, you talked about the importance of engaging our partners in our ministry, and mm -hmm. that will become deeper, more whole and fulfilled partners are those who are engaged. Well, we look for engagement opportunities, and that's where people get involved with their labor and their influence and their expertise. So I'm going to ask them in a wide variety of ways. Mm -hmm. I may take someone who gave $10,000 at our Perfect Vision dinner, or I might you know, meet someone at a church, they give 10000 I might take them out to lunch and say, hey, here's some opportunities for involvement. Thank you for your gift of $10,000. Mm -hmm. Would you have any interest at all in your time in being a table host for our dinner? Mm -hmm. Would you be interested in helping to chair a committee that we have, maybe a subcommittee of the board? Would you be on, interested in an advisory board? Would you be interested in our full board? So present opportunities that way for them. Now, I, do you ever come across people who, because typically the people that write the $10,000 checks are the business owners or uh, retired people, and they might come across and say, you know, I'll, I'll write you a check any any time of the day, but just don't ask me to give up my time. Oh, absolutely. I, I live 30 years in the Washington, D.C. area. People are swamped in that area, but it's one of the highest uh, areas for income in the United States. So I had people all the time saying to me, Jim, uh, I'll give you any amount of money that you want, just don't ask for my time. It's too important. Yeah, so, so how do you get those people involved in yeah. your work. Well, you know, there's there's a point where you can't get someone involved in everything, but I really kind of look at my percentages on that. I'm not going to get 100% in every area, but if I can get 100% or even, you know, 60, 70, 80% in the finances mm -hmm. and then maybe get 10% of their volunteer time, like they'll they'll maybe be a table host, come to the dinner, but they're not coming into the office to fold stuff, seal. They're not going to help to run a walkathon that you have, but they are going to fill a table with their friends. I'll take that. Right. Maybe somebody can't give me any time, but they will be willing to connect me up with someone else, a friend. Maybe they will go to lunch. They at least go to lunch with people and would be willing to yeah, sure introduce me to their friends. Or, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, but on the expertise side of things too, uh, I you know if somebody is willing to use their skills in accounting and marketing, in right. even in development fundraising, uh, mm -hmm. but in HR, will mm -hmm. utilize those skills. It really has been a proven fact that people who help you in multiple ways give more. Uh, well, yeah, be, because they're more invested. They're more invested in the product. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Jim, you mentioned the Perfect Vision Dinner course, and I can't pass up the opportunity to talk about that. Right. So um, if you are tuning in for the first time, you want to learn more about fundraising masterminds and what Jim and I are doing, uh, we are doing a weekly podcast, which we're videotaping as well. So you can find it on wherever podcasts are right. broadcast. But you can also go to YouTube and look up Fundraising Masterminds, and we've got the episodes videotaped as well, so you can actually see us and yeah. watch us and get to yeah. know us more. Um, but one thing that we are really mm. excited about is the curriculum, the training courses that we are developing for nonprofits. And these, right. um, these courses are really tapping into um, our 60 years of combined knowledge. Jim yeah. has over 38 years of knowledge in the development space. And I've got over 25 years of development knowledge uh, through my software company that I mm. run, FundEasy. And also um, I run my own nonprofit uh, called Reaching the Heart of Zambia. So we have worked with hundreds of ministries, thousands of ministries yeah. even uh, over the country. And together, I think we've raised over a billion dollars, yeah. even yeah, more absolutely. than that yeah. uh, over the years. So Jim's responsible for 28, was it 28 million? About 20 million with 28 the million. current organization. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's we are not just sitting behind a microphone talking about 
you know, ideal situations. We're actually in the trenches with you guys, um, with, uh, with some of the things that we're teaching. So we're practitioners just yeah. like you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the perfect vision dinner course, uh, that we put together is really a 20 week comprehensive course that takes you step by step through the process of how to do a vision dinner. Absolutely. And uh, we talk a lot about mindset for the first uh, three weeks, Yeah, right? And yep. all this stuff we talk about, we go into great detail on this life principle thing. Right. We talk about friend raising versus fundraising. Uh, and once you understand the concepts, right. uh, then we actually walk you through week by week by week. We handhold you through the process of actually doing a perfect vision dinner. Yeah, it's right? an exhaustive and course. And I would just say that, you know, Definitely look into it because, you know, you might do a gala or a banquet or um, something where you sell tickets or sell tables and you might think, oh, yeah, 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 we do a dinner. Uh, you may not do a dinner the way we do a dinner, right? We do um, a specific kind of dinner uh, that has a specific kind of result. Yeah. And you're definitely, I can almost guarantee you're not getting as good a results as we right. are from our model. We know that these things work. Yeah. Uh, we're not just salespeople trying right. to get you to buy a course. Right. Yeah. You know, we when you when you work in an industry for a long period of time, and you start to see new people coming in that have done things that you've already done in the past, and you know, it, you're like I've been down that road and I've I've gone that way, and it, it just I spent five years learning a hard lesson. Yep. You know, and then you have an epiphany. Yeah. And you learn, like, you know what? It's not about fundraising. It's about friend raising. Right. And it's about cultivating relationships. And it's about all this stuff. Yeah. And one of the best ways to do that and to get new people involved, yep. you know, in the win, keep, and lift is through the vision dinner. Yeah. But not just any vision dinner. Right. Uh, the vision dinner done the right way. The perfect vision dinner. The perfect vision dinner. Right. So if you're interested in this, definitely go check out our website. It's fundraisingmasterminds.net. Yep. You can learn all about it. We have a webinar that explains about it in great detail. Uh, and that link is in the description below. Our courses start in the fall and in the spring. Oh, yeah. So I just got... wanted to say, yeah, our courses are actually, they're not pre -rec They are pre-recorded videos, but it's a live course. Yes. Right? So you actually have yep. to enroll uh, in the spring and you have to mm -hmm. enroll yep. in the fall. So we do it twice a year. And what's the uniqueness that what's the distinctive that we have, Jason, that yeah, I the, love? The uniqueness about the course is that you get access to you and I yeah. every week. We do weekly calls. So right. we are going to allow you to watch the videos and learn. And we're going to teach you all this stuff through the pre recorded sessions that we did. Um, but then every single week, we're going to do an hour call with every single person a part of the course. And you're going to have the opportunity to talk to us, ask questions. Yeah. You know, So we're not just trying to sell you a course necessarily, but we're trying to uh, really make you successful yeah. in what you do. We don't just give you a curriculum and say, be warm, be filled, and have do fun. your best. Yeah, right. we we walk along. We, we take you by the hand and walk you through the process. Right. But one of the other things that I love so much is the whole community aspect. Yeah. When you are doing this with 20, 30 other organizations, you build uh, a, a... You get to learn what they do. And and you find yeah, out what works amazing. for them. We share ideas. Uh, we're our, our, our curriculum course right now, our time on Mondays, is just an amazing time. We're yeah. sharing ideas and sharing what works and what doesn't work. What does the life principles have to do with the vision dinner? Well, that's, I mean, that's your end result. That's where you want to get. You, you Your dinner helps you identify your your key your critical few because it, those principles apply to your dinner as well too and i like to generally start with individuals that come from your dinner i i those are some of the first people i immerse in the life strategy because it's so targeted i know right away from that event coming on the heels of that event you have people that are motivated excited they loved what they heard at the dinner mm -hmm. and they want to be involved more than just financially. In fact, a lot of them are chomping in the bit. They can't wait to do more because they liked so much what they heard. So right. I'll take the 20% that came out of the dinner and that will be my first life group. That will be the individuals that I'm going to go to introduce to them the concept. Right. We talk about this in the course. Yeah, we that, do. Um, 
as soon as we're done with the dinner, we don't just stop there. Right. We have follow up, we have thank yous, yeah. and then the work really starts for yeah. the next dinner. Yeah. That's right? really the commencement. You know, we talk about, uh, you know, a, a graduation, high school, college, whatever is being commencement. And of course, commencement isn't the end, it's the beginning. And that's what your event is. Too many organizations finish events, they're exhausted, they, you know, they just take a couple weeks off and, and don't think about that follow up process. But I'll tell you, not only in addition to phone calls and meetings with individuals and letters that go out, this whole concept needs to be rolled out. This life strategy with those 20%, it's mm. just so, so perfect. And right. with some of your key people, you know, take them to lunch and, and share with them that thank you for your gift. We'd like to talk to you about some other opportunities. Right. This has been an amazing time, Jim. Uh, I've really enjoyed talking to you more in depth about the life acrostic. Uh, again, that's labor, influence, finance, and expertise. Yeah. Uh, and again, we're looking for that 20% that we want to not only get them more engaged financially, yep. but we want to get them engaged uh, with their labor, their influence, and their expertise. Right. Because when they get involved and they have a stake in it, yeah. right, and they get personally uh, engaged, yeah. whether it's um, hosting a table or being a greeter or stuffing envelopes or whatever, whatever it is, right? They're going to be more connected, yeah. And they're going to yeah. be more. Yeah. They're going to feel like they're making more of a difference. They're owners. They become, you know, owners, they become partners. The, yeah, and partners with right? you. We in talk ministry. a lot about partners. Yep. We're building partners mm -hmm. for life. Right. That's so right. That's a great way to remember it. Yeah. You're partners. For you're life. not treating people as wallets. You're building partners for life. Yeah. It's not transactional relationships. It's transformational. And being right. a life partner is transformational. Well, this wraps up our episode for Fundraising Mastermind Podcast. Uh, again, I'm Jason Galasinski and my co-host, Jim Dempsey. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you found this content helpful, definitely smash that like button or subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our podcast uh, because you can watch us on YouTube. Yep. But you can also listen to us in the car, uh, wherever podcasts are broadcast. And we're also um, sharing our content on Instagram, Facebook, um, and so, yeah, we just are so excited to be able to share this content with you. Yep. Uh, but we really do have a heart for nonprofit leaders. And so if you are a nonprofit leader, we would love to start a conversation with you. And we would love to have the opportunity to just pour into you and mentor you uh, in whatever way we can, whatever way is helpful. So definitely reach out to us and we would love to start that conversation. Until next time, I'm Jason Galasinski and my co-host, Jim Dempsey, we'll see you soon.